Hello. Ahoy. Welcome to the penultimate episode of season two of Bottom of the Stream. Number 24. 24 of 25. And uh, we're nearly there. Yeah. We're uh, blasting through this season. It's exciting don't, times. Don't you think this season's gone really quick? So fast. So fast. It's like, it's crazy. I know. I, I feel like the first season in my brain, I can remember it sort of, yeah, not slow, but... I can section it off and remember yeah, it being a thing that progressed, whereas this one's just like... Absolutely. Whoosh. And their episodes are like three times as long as they were back in season one, so I don't know what's going on. Anyway, welcome. I'm Adam. I'm Nick. Uh, what shall I do first? I'll do the socials, Good and idea. then we'll get into some news. Follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter is at B-O-T-S underscore podcast. Our Instagram is the same, at B-O-T-S underscore podcast. Facebook.com slash bottom of the stream is the Facebook page. The email address is bottom of the stream at gmail.com and the website is www.bottomofthestream.com i nearly forgot the email address nearly forgot the website <laughs> then that's really bad um also you can follow us on patreon where we will you can give us a little bit of cash every month and we'll send you some cool shit out in the post and give you a shout out on here you get a wild card if you're going at a certain level yep you'll usual have, sort of gum. you'll have access to our bonus episodes yes and um all that sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. If you can't do that, leave us a review either on Podchaser or on Apple Podcasts. Yes. Because it definitely helps. It does. Drop us a few little stars and a few little words. That'd be really nice. Yes. Or some long words. Or some long whatever, words. Whatever floats Just your boat. any words. Yeah. Don't, I don't even think they have to make sense. Just, probably not. Just hey. nice. Just bit, let us know what like you think podcast. of the latest film if you want. I want to quickly mention that we got sent a gift this week, which is our okay. first, first gift that we've ever been given. Um, I mentioned Grief Burrito a lot, but they mention us every week as well, so <laughs> it's becoming a thing. Um, they sent us a little key ring. You've got it there in front of you. I have. It's, it's, it's like an old timey. It's like our TV. logo. It's like the TV from our logo, it is. almost to the point where the buttons are in the same place, and it makes like a creepy static noise. It. Yeah, do it. Oh. <laughs> probably really horrible for everyone. To yeah, it will be. To. I'll put a video of it on Instagram, but, but yeah, it's, it's like a, an old timey cathode tv it's firing up from it? another country as well i can't remember where harrison said he brought it from but i think it was berlin somewhere like correct that. which is a city in germany it is when we were still allowed to travel <laughs> quite we're not allowed anymore um yeah so that was really nice thank you very much for that guys we do appreciate it thank you uh yeah go and check out grief burrito what were we going to do next uh we usually do some news news i've got news good i've got two lots of news this oh, week double header do you remember britbox launched a while back yes I think we did briefly mention it at the week it started. It did. It's not going particularly well for it. Okay. Would that it, be because you can get everything elsewhere? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> completely. Uh, so they have reported that they're struggling to attract subscribers. And this might be the reason why pretty much all of the BBC content that's on Netflix has left Netflix. Right. So I feel like they might have poached it or at least taken control back from it. Fine. So Well, it makes sense. I have a list here of every... BBC comedy series that have left Netflix in the last week. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, Bits of Fry and Lorry. Didn't even know it was on there, but okay. Yeah. Absolutely fabulous. Okay. Almost Royal. Never heard of it. Nor me. Daniel Deronda. Never heard of it. Extras. Yeah. Faulty Towers. French and Saunders. Harry Enfield and Chums, but then that got cancelled and that's staying on Netflix. Cool. So that's weird. Right. Okay. Um, Harry Enfield Presents. Porridge. Rock and Chips. That Mitchell and Webb Look. The Job Lot, The Office, The Royal Family, The Thick of It, The Trip, The Two Ronnies, and Victoria Wood as seen on TV. Okay. All as left Netflix, so presumably all heading over to BritBox. Would any of those attract you to subscribe to BritBox? No. Nor me. Nor me at I all. I think I've seen the ones I'd want to see. I watched that Michelin web look as soon as I got Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to watch it again. No. But I can go, I can, as a someone who lives in the UK, can I not just go and watch them on... You can watch them on the iPlayer the, or on 4 Which is the BBC's or, own or, or, service. Sorry. And, yeah. So why do I need this other th- I don't third? Don't understand what streaming. Brit Britbox offers to the British public. Me neither. I don't get it. I just don't get it. I can understand why an American audience would want it. Yeah. But I don't understand what why it's being marketed at a British public. There's not a gap there to fill. There's not. I I don't understand. There's, it's just the BBC trying to be ahead of the curve, but they're ten years behind it. I yeah. That that's you're spot on. They're, they're, it's almost too late to get into Completely. that uh, when that content is already available to us elsewhere. Yes. Couldn't agree yeah. more. It's bullshit. It's a waste yeah. of time. Don't don't get BritBox. We haven't got it, and we all, all we do is watch TV and films. I've also got another bit of Netflix news that came out. I think it came out today, as we record Hot this. Off the press. Hot <laughs> off the presses. Um, back in no a long, long, long time ago, November two thousand and eighteen, oh, Netflix, the days. Netflix rec- acquired the rights to Roald Dahl's works. Right. And today they have announced their first production. Oh, brilliant! What are we getting? We are getting a 
animated TV series of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Okay. And an animated TV series which will expand on the universe of the Umpalumpers. Oh, okay. Both shows are being written and directed by Taika Waititi. Oh, amazing. <laughs> so I feel like that's really exciting. How does this guy have time I to do know. all this stuff? <laughs> I've got no idea. He's described the series as a wholly original take on the Umpa Lumpers that builds out their world. Excellent. What um, a busy man. Yeah. They also have shows in the works for Matilda, Matilda the BFG, and the Twits okay. currently. And they've, but they brought pretty much every Roald Dahl story. Ace. So we're getting a lot of Roald Dahl content. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of good source material for them to go into there. Yeah, exactly. So I, yeah, um, I can't think of anybody better to direct... A Charlie and the Chocolate Terror Factory TV series. I've and... just finished watching, and it is not Netflix related, so apologies, <laughs> but it is Taika Waititi related. It's apt. It's uh-huh. part of my content. Um, I've, I've had it recorded on like my box for ages. Yeah. Uh, the What We Do in the Shadows TV series. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Was it really good? I do yeah, need to I get love, onto love that. Yeah, I love the movie, and the TV series was hilarious. I do need to get onto that. I have seen the movie, but it was a long time ago, so maybe I'll just do both again. Yeah. I do love Taika Waititi. Jojo Rabbit's an incredible piece of cinema. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. I was I've been a fan well, I was a big fan of Flight of the Concords from way back yeah. where we where we started off. I've never really watched that. I need to get into that as well. I can, I can lend you the film. Lend me the, lend me, on what? <laughs> I think I might still have a DVD of them. I haven't got a DVD player. Oh, okay. I've I got know. Netflix. I don't need a DVD player. Use I've got a PlayStation. I could watch it on that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's it. That's the news. News <laughs> that, is that done. was the news. <laughs> There's no more news. Have you got anything you want to talk about? Uh, I've got a game to play. Oh, amazing. Two weeks in a row. Was, did we do I one know. last week? We did. Yeah, we, we did. did uh, oh, of course we did. <laughs> Superhero or Super Zero. Yeah. I've been talking about Dog World a lot this week. Me too. I even had a conversation with another podcast about it. <laughs> he's definitely my number one superhero of all time now. Yeah, completely. He's he's completely buried himself into my head. I'm even con- contemplating trying to get hold of some of the stories. I think he's in the end about like 10 things. Yeah, there's a, I think there's called Super Six. Right. There's a, a six, six book comic about him, apparently. Of the, of the team. Because I think team. I mentioned yeah, the team, team yeah, yeah. Of which Dog Welder is part. <laughs> I remember brilliant. finding Arm Fall Off Boy a lot funnier at the time, but for some reason, Dog Welder stuck in my head. Well, it's just a, it's a very abstract concept, isn't it? Completely. It's, just... it's mental. Anyway, let's not talk about Dog Welder <laughs> again. What's your game, Nick? Uh, so, this week, what movie were we talking about? Oh, we're talking about the last laugh. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to say laugh because I don't say laugh. So that's fine. That's weird. fine. So um, it is, how shall we say, politely, uh, starring two more distinguished gentlemen. Yep, old blokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, I know you're also familiar with the uh, game Play Your Cards Right. Yes. So what is the basic premise of Play Your Cards Right? Um, Bruce Forsyth shows you a number, and then you have to guess whether it's higher or lower than the next Correct. number. Correct. So we are going to play today, Play Your Old Dudes Right. Oh, amazing. So I will give you an old dude, yep. and how old that dude is, and I want you to tell me, is the next old dude oh, this older? this is a different concept for a game. I like it. Or younger. And what are you calling the game? Play Your Old Dudes Right. I like it. So cool, we'll, I'm ready. Okay. So we'll we'll just see how far you can get. Uh, and then we'll just carry on anyway, <laughs> if you get it wrong, because I've got a list. We need content. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we'll start appropriately with uh, Cornelius Chase. I know how old Chevy Chase is. Okay. 74. Is yeah, right? well, I was going to give you that, because it's the start. <laughs> I knew point. that anyway, because I, I looked it up during watching this film. So well, I thought okay. you might have done, hence me giving you, that's a, your starting point. So I want you to tell me, is Christopher Lloyd older or younger Ooh. than Chevy Chase? Ooh, Christopher Lloyd seems like he's been old forever. It's one of those guys, isn't he? Yeah. I think he is older. Correct. 76. No, 81. Is he really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, next one is our old friend, Michael Douglas. Older or younger than 81? Older or younger. I don't think he's 81. 81. I don't think he's that old. Younger. Correct. Yes. How old do you think? 78. 75. Oh, really? Yeah, good start. Right, next... Our other star from this week's movie, Richard (laughs) Dreyfuss. We didn't look up how old he was. How old was the last one? Michael Douglas, 75. 75. No, Richard Dreyfuss is older than that. Older. No. No, really? He is a whippersnapper at a mere 72. Really? Chevy Chase is older? Yeah. Wow. So you you look at them in this this film, you wouldn't think that. Cool, 72. Uh, yeah, Rich Dreyfus is seventy-two, so we'll we'll carry on anyway. So yeah. the next one is Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito is older than seventy-two. Correct. 
79. 75? Oh, really? That's, so, I was thinking because he was in Taxi with Christopher Lloyd. The yeah, he was. Roughly. And uh, Michael Douglas. He's good mates with Michael Douglas. Yeah. Um, okay, so after Danny DeVito, we have got Joe Pesci. Definitely older. 75? Yeah. Yeah, definitely older. Correct. 83. No. Really? 77. Oh, really? Sorry, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Retirement has obviously not been kind. No, obviously not. Uh, so after Joe Pesci, we've got Morgan Freeman. Well, how old was Joe Pesci? 77. Oh, that's going to be close. I think Morgan Freeman's just in his 80s. Correct. 80? Eighty two. Eighty two. Yeah. Wow. Right. These guys look good for their age. I know. They're, they're all still working as well. Three more. So after Morgan Freeman, we've got Harrison Ford, Han Solo himself, Indiana Jones. 82? Yeah. 82. Um, Younger or older? I don't think he's that old. Younger. Correct. 80. 77. Oh, I'm not very good at guessing that. I'm getting good at whether they're older or younger. Yeah, you've only, got, you've only took one misstep, so that's quite impressive. Yeah. So after Harrison Ford, we have got Al Pacino. Ooh. So Ford is 77. Pacino's younger, 76. No, he is older. Really? 79. Really? Wow. Yeah. He looks good for his age. He's gone a bit... He's in a bit of a crazy hair stage, isn't yeah, he? He's, he's, yeah. He's a bit... Hoboey. I've put um helps hide have his age. The trailer for Hunters. Yes. I've put that on my list. That's that's one of those shows that you shouldn't talk about on Amazon. But <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about Amazon. But yeah, I put that on my list. It looks quite good. Okay, last one. Uh Jack Nicholson. Jack older than seventy nine. Seventy nine. Yeah. Jack Nicholson's definitely in his eighties. Eighty two. Yeah. Eighty two. Good, you did all right there. Thank you. Just got, couple, got two couple. wrong? Yeah. That's not bad. Did I get Joe Pesci and Al Pacino wrong? Uh yeah. Both in The Irishman. Yep. Which I've still not watched. <laughs> That'd be why. If I'd have watched that, I'd have got them oh, all right. Of course, yeah. That would have been the, <laughs> That would have made all the difference, obviously. Excellent. I enjoyed that one. That was a different concept than your usual games. Good Thanks. fun. I like to keep you on your toes. You do indeed. Uh, anything else? Or should we get on with the film? No, that's it for me. Let's uh, crack on with the movie. Let's crack on with the, the film. So this week we watched a film called The Last Laugh, which is recent. It's from 2019. I know. Talking but, of uh, hot off the press, it's it this from movie. January 2019, so wow. it's still fairly old. Um, it's 15. It's, uh, runtime is one hour and 38 minutes and currently rated at 5.6 out of 10 on IMDb. It's a mid-range. Stars, as you said, Chevy Chase as a character called Al Hart. Uh, if you don't know Chevy Chase, then what are you doing with your life? He's been in... If you were a child of the eighties, you got brought up with him, yeah. Yeah. What's your best? What's What's your What springs to mind when you think of Chevy Chase? National Lampoon's films, just all of them. Yeah, Christmas Vacation. Christmas Vacation is really good. Is it just Vacation as well? National. Yeah. The one where he gets stuck on a roundabout. I think that's that one. Uh, yeah, he was in everything. Caddyshack, Three Amigos. Yeah. Yes. And obviously Community, which you're a yep. huge fan of. Yep. He's this, very good in that. This is his first leading role in nineteen years. Really? Yeah. The last time he was in a leading role in a film was a film called Snow Day in the year 2000. Okay. So, yeah. Is that chiefly, again, because he does a lot of cameos. supposed to be not the easiest yeah, person to work with. A bit of a, Legend has it. Bit of a diva. Yeah, he does a lot of cameos over the last 20 odd years, but he's not done a leading role till this between this one and that one. Um, also stars Richard Dreyf- Dreyfus. Dreyfus. I've Dreyfus. heard it both ways. I'm going to say Dreyfus. Um, he plays a character called Buddy Green. You'll know him from Jaws, yes. mainly, I think. Close Encounters. Close Encounters. Of kind. Um, he also is an Oscar winner. I know. We're starting to rack him up. We are we? racking up these Oscar winners this season. He starred in a film called Goodbye Girl in 1977 and won an Oscar for Best Actor in a Leading Role. Also stars Andy McDowell. This is star-studded. I know. This one. Three, three knowable. Knowable? They're like, they are very famous, but... At the same time, three people who you've probably not seen around for a while. Yeah. I think it's like, fair to say. Yeah, I'd agree with that. They're probably, they're all really... Andy McDowell, you feel like she's just in everything, but she's really not. She was... I feel like she was in a lot of things in the 90s. Yeah. And, and they were all rom-coms. Yeah. But she was around a lot. Well, she's in Four Weddings and a Funeral, isn't she? So yeah. That's like the biggest rom-com of all time. Yeah, exactly. Um, she's probably most famous for Groundhog Day, though, I would think. Of course, yeah. Yeah, she was in that. This film was directed and written by a guy called Greg Pritkin. He might be he might have the distinction of being the first person on the podcast to be the holder of a Razzie Award. Oh. Not 
an Oscar. <laughs> so the Os- the Razzies are like the anti Oscars. They are, yeah. So he directed a film in 2014 called Movie 43. Oh, I'm aware of this film. Are you? Yeah. I it's, haven't it's seen like, it. I am aware I'm, of it. No, I haven't either. It's like lots of little sketches, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like little 10 minute sketches, I think. And there's quite a lot of big name actors in it. Hasn't like, I wanted to say Hugh Jackman. Doesn't he have like a ball bag on his face or something? <laughs> uh, possibly. Stephen Merchant's in it. Emma Stone's in it. Richard Gere's in it. It's Lee Schreiber, it, it Dennis is... Quaid, Greg Kinnear. Like loads and loads of famous. Steph, Seth MacFarlane. It's supposed to be absolutely Hugh Jackman garbage. Is, in it, yeah. uh, is Kate Winslet. The list of names in it are phenomenal. It's rated at 4.3 out of 10 on IMDb. And it was in 2014 won the Razzie for Worst Picture and Worst Director. That is impressive. That is impressive. And this man directed and wrote this film that we're about to talk about. So it does not come from good stock. (laughs) That's why it's found its way onto our show. That's why it's at the bottom of the stream, languishing, I would imagine. Do you have a a one-word review of the last laugh? 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 How are we saying it? Can we make a decision? I would say last. I'd say laugh. laugh. So I'm going to say laugh. That's how I would say it in my normal everyday world. I would say last laugh. Are you having a laugh? Yeah, Yeah, laugh. Do you have a one-word review of the last laugh? We, we tell me off if I say wrinkly. No. Okay. Say it more. Wrinkly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you call. Yeah. There's, there's old people in it. I don't know how old Andy McDowell is. She's got to be fifties. I think she's in the sixties. Do you? Yeah. Go on. Have a quick look. I'll have a quick look. Do some live googling. Makes for great. Great podcasting. Audio entertainment. Uh, I'll go sixty-four. Incorrect, 62. Ah, I nearly went with 62. Well, you didn't, though. No. <laughs> she's 62 this year as well, so right. she's 61 currently. Let's talk about The Last <laughs> Laugh, finally. <laughs> um, this film starts and Chevy Chase is at home and he is watching a promotional video, DVD. Yeah, this is, it's, yeah it's basically a virtual tour, isn't it? Yeah, of, of, a, of a retirement, retirement complex. complex for elderly people. And he is watching this from his in his own home and he... It does not look impressed. There's a close-up right upon his face right at the beginning. It is on. An, he's watching it on an old TV, like the little present. He is, yeah. <laughs> on a, he's got a DVD player, though. It's not yeah. VHS. So, uh, but so, but he get once it's finished. He does watch it all. Yeah. But once does, it's yeah. finished, he gets up and takes the DVD out of the DVD player and tries to snap it in half. He does. And fails. Have you ever tried to snap a DVD in half? Oh, it's really difficult. It's really difficult. And quite dangerous. <laughs> I just remembered when I got my very first PC in 1998. 18. <laughs> no the man from the shop came and set it up in our house right and once he'd finished installing something he took a cd out and he was he was trying to be really cool and he snapped the dvd in half or cd in half it would have been then and it literally shattered like glass and went everywhere and my mum had to get the hoover out and it's just, i don't know why that's just plugged into my head because normally they just break in half i thought you were going to say he like cut an artery and no he just had, it, like, it shattered as if it was made of everywhere. glass it went everywhere but normally they're just breaking half. I don't know why that's just came into my head. Can't do that with a stream, can you? You can't. You can't do that with Netflix. There's a man from the shop came and set a computer up. That wouldn't happen these no. days either. God, I'm so old. <laughs> I've written here. In the next scene, Chevy Chase goes to dinner with Roger's girlfriend from the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's actually, exactly that true. Correct. Roger's had a lot of girlfriends in the Big Bang Theory. She was the scared little meek one. She was like scared of social situations, wasn't yeah, she? Yeah, the actress is Kate McCookie Mik- or something like that. <laughs> I don't know how you pronounce She's very kooky. Yeah, um, she plays his granddaughter. But he, Chevy Chase walks to this this lunch date and he's he's got his like Beats earphones on. Yeah. And he's he's like, I'm hip, I'm really hip, I'm listening to the shins. <laughs> Which, who were quite in 10 years ago when yeah. Zach Braff did Garden State. <laughs> they were all over that soundtrack. Yeah, they were. And they're basically, when they get there, they're having a conversation about she wants him to move into this home and he's not convinced, he's not keen, but she doesn't want him to be alone is what she says. Yeah, correct. And he's not that bothered. He, you find out at this point that he used to be a manager of like comedy, com- comedian, can't say it, comedians. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be like a talent agent manager yeah, kind just, of yeah. for comedians. Get the Back bookings in and all that days, sort of yeah. stuff. He's kind of debating in his head whether he wants to move into this place or not, isn't he? And he goes to visit his wife's, I want to say grave. Uh, but so it, it, it was like a memorial wall. Yeah, it's. I always pictured. <laughs> I think, like, are there bodies actually in there? No, don't and be they're silly. like on drawers. <laughs> I don't think. And so. they're interred. Do you think? I don't know. Like we don't have them in this. We, we don't, don't really know. have them in this country like no. that. That's always what I pictured. I might be being very naive. Anybody who doesn't know the answer to that to Nick's mental question <laughs> there, 
let us know. Um, but yeah, it's like a wall of like a, I pictured it like a, just a memorial wall. Yeah. But he's there and he's talking away to her whether he should go into it or not. But in she must have said yes because in the next scene he's having a, a tour. Yeah. So him him and Jenny go to have a tour around the um, retirement home. Yeah. And the woman in the retirement home says, "What better way to show you around this retirement home than to get one of our current residents to do it?" And this old man, really old man, turns up with a Zimmer frame and he's that crotchety old dude. He's very he? cranky. He's very cranky. And it becomes evident quite quickly that he's putting this on. Yeah. It reminded me of um, Gene Wilder at the beginning of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, <laughs> funnily enough, when he's like, he fakes being a really old man, doesn't he? It is immediately obvious that this is Richard Dreyfuss yeah. hamming it up. Yeah, completely. And eventually, it takes a little while, but eventually they recognise each other. Yes. I, I think Dreyfuss knew, didn't he? Yeah, but he knew that it was going to be Al that was going to, so he was playing this prank yeah, on purpose. Yeah. But Al eventually recognises him. And but he basically convinces him to join him. Yeah, he says it's a great place. We have a lot of fun here. Yeah. They're, they're they're friends from the past. I should, yeah. we should probably point that out. It turns out he was he was one of Al's first clients. Yeah, but he was a stand up comedian like fifty years ago. But he gave it all up. It all, it all comes out why he gave it all up. But he gave it all up. And yeah, and that's how they know. But they said so they haven't seen each other for like fifty years. But they instantly recognised each other, and it's like a reunion. He bet, one of the the lines that clinches it for him is he says that. Uh, so uh, Buddy says to Al, oh, all the chicks here <laughs> are old and horny. Yeah, he does. Don't and that kind of clinches it. <laughs> he also says that the, he describes them as pre-dead. <laughs> like the politically correct term is pre-dead. And I really like that. It was really funny. So yeah, uh, Al moves in. Get a bit of does, a montage. Yeah. There's a lot of montage. For montage fans, there's a there's few a, montages, a few montages in, this in this one. There really is. And they go to watch like a cabaret show. Yeah, so they obviously have the entertainment and every there's, night. Yeah, there's evening entertainment. It's pretty bad. Um, there's like magicians and singers and yep. weird shit going on. And they have a bit of a drink after this show's finished, don't they? And then this lady comes out. Yeah. And she calls Buddy over. She whisks him away. She for whisks some, him uh, away for some good times, fun times, some naughty times. And that's yeah, that's kind of the end of um, yeah. Al's first day in there. Yeah, that's kind of you set up for the film is that Al's now living in this retirement home with his his old friend. And there's loads of other old men. Turns out horny, horny old men live in there. Did, what did you make of the next scene where where there was basically <laughs> a load of 17, 80 year olds talk, uh, sitting around a, a table talking about sex? It was weird. I, it, it wasn't... What was weirder? No, I'm not saying that. That's disgusting. You could say... <laughs> no, I'm not saying it. They were talking about whether they could still uh, get, get, up. get an erection. The one, one, um, I was going to say my mum and dad watched this film, but I'm not saying that. Okay. <laughs> Did they recommend it to you? No, they, I was telling them about it afterwards and they said, oh, we've already seen that. Okay. Like, oh, maybe it's not as a bottom of the stream as I thought it was because they literally just watch the first thing that comes up on their Netflix. They don't know how to scroll through. They're old as well. They're not this old. <laughs> I really hope they do. <laughs> um, but there's one old guy and he's like a drug pusher and he's pushing Viagra, isn't he? He's trying <laughs> to peddle it out to the people. He tells them that there will be enough to get them a semi. Yeah. Oh, he does. I wasn't prepared for this level of, <laughs> I, like... The re- I really wasn't. Hangover-style humour from, from this for movie. I man. was not expecting that. No. But um, it, it is literally only for this... Yeah, it doesn't happen again. ...that it gets it's, this sort yeah, of... Yeah, um, he did say semi, crude. and that did put me off. <laughs> Chevy Chase says he's happy with a semi. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Bless him. Lovely old man. Anyway, um, they're interrupted by uh, a, a gentleman called Johnny Sunshine. Yes. Which is another good character name. Brilliant name. Again, maybe we need to add that into one of the categories. That we've got. <laughs> and this guy is a, like Mr. Miserable in the in the camp, isn't he? He's like, so he comes in, he's the bearer of bad news, yeah, isn't he? He has all the gossip, doesn't he, about what's going on. So like he's, he's telling him about one old woman who died last night, someone else who had a fall and broke a hip. Yeah. He, got, he basically comes in and dishes all the dirt yeah. on what's gone wrong in the in the. And all the way through this, you can see that Al's not comfortable. He doesn't. You can see in his face that he doesn't want to be there. He yeah, he's, yeah. I think he's realizing. Yeah, he's not. He's not ready for this. Which is exactly what life. he says in the next scene. He he, go, he takes Buddy to one side and he says, "Look, I'm not. I'm not comfortable with this. I don't feel like I'm there yet." Which I, get, I guess you get to that sort of stage where you do think, oh, "I've had enough now. I'm going to go and live in a retirement home." But he, he's saying he's not not there yet. He's not uh, not ready to be in this sort of. Yeah, area of the world. They're just sort of um, sitting by the swimming pool out there in the evening, having a yeah. bit of a chat. And um, Buddy is definitely there. Buddy is loving his life. Buddy's there. <laughs> well, he's he's sitting there smoking pot. Yeah, yeah, he's loving always, his life. He's always smoking pot. He's loving it. Uh, but this is well, Al, where Al sort of tries to appeal to Buddy to come on, let's do one last tour. Yeah, this is your crux of your whole film starts here. So 
they're they're sitting having they're on like a couple of sun lounges, aren't they? Yeah. And Al sort of turns to him and says, "Look, I think you should come back. Let's make this comeback tour. A lot of com- comics are doing yeah. it now." He says it quite a few times through this. You know, there's yeah. a great story here. You gave it up fifty years ago to start a different life. Yeah. Apparently, fifty years ago, he got invited to go on the Ed Sullivan show. But he turned and, it down. He turned it down, and he went on to be a podiatrist. Yeah, he, he just he just, just quit showbiz completely. He went and had his so family and had a, a successful pretty high life. Level. He must have got to a pretty high level to get invited onto Ed Sullivan. Yeah, but didn't want it. He just decided he never it wanted it. Yeah, it wasn't for him. So he went on to be a leading podiatrist. So, it, Buddy basically says to him, "Look, I'm not have, I'm not that guy anymore. I'm not a comedian. I've yeah. been a comedian for fifty years." He says, "I like it here." Yeah, but then you do get some bad news in the next scene that. Buddy's girlfriend has passed away. Yeah, so the next morning. Yeah. Turns out they went to sleep together and she just didn't wake up. Yeah. Whoa, a bit heavy. Heavy, heavy. And Buddy sort of... That kind of changes his outlook yeah, on life sure. a little bit. And so, because he says to Bud, he says to Al, I actually hate it here and I'm not ready to die. Yeah, he says she was the only thing... Keeping it. Keeping it keeping good. It, yeah. And he's like, I, I sort of pretended that I... Yeah, didn't, all this Not is, didn't like her, but that... She, yeah, yeah, but actually I all, really love this woman. And so he says, let's do it. Put me to work. And this, this is pretty much where your film starts now, isn't it? It's yep. Road from, trip. From this point on, it's they pack up a car and they hit the road. I've written they hit the road slowly because Al, <laughs> <me too. laughs> Al drives off, but he drives like a little old man. And you get a driving montage for quite a long time. And they're heading to Vegas. Sort of. Sort of. So Al tells him that he's got him a booking in Vegas. Yep. But it turns out to be an off-strip hotel. He, he says it's off-off-strip. Off-off-strip. Which is, I guess is an actual thing, because off-strip is definitely yeah. a thing in Vegas. So off-off-strip must be. Because you get off-Broadway and off-off-Broadway. Yeah. That's a thing. And it's like it's basically this little run-down, smoky, dingy comedy yeah, club, exactly. isn't it? In the, in, like, I don't know, on maybe the outskirts of Las Vegas. 40, 50 people in there, something yeah. like that. And just before he hits the stage, Buddy turns to Alan and says, I need some mascara. Get me some mascara. And you're like, what does he need mascara yeah. for? And Buddy, Al gets him. I'm going to get their names mixed up so much. <laughs> Al and Buddy are like, so they don't sound real. So Al is Chevy Chase. Yes. And, Buddy and is what you've got to remember is he was in the video for yeah. Call Me Al. <laughs> he was. Paul Simon. Oh, that's going to make it more complicated. I don't remember that. <laughs> but so Al goes off and gets him some mascara and he does get him some. I don't know where he got it from. And then Buddy goes out on stage. And when he hits the stage, you notice that his moustache is a lot less grey than yeah. it was. So he's obviously tinted his mascara. Uh, tinted his mascara. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Moustache. Moustache. Tinted his moustache. And so, but he hits the stage and he. It doesn't should, start well. Do you know what he should have said what? to Al for getting him the mascara? What? He should have said, moustache gracias. <laughs> I moustache you for some mascara. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it doesn't start well this first gig. No. So some of his jokes go it's, down very poorly. There's a prominent heckler, isn't there? There is. There's a, a man who's heckling at him. And he doesn't really know how to come back to him. But then suddenly he finds his groove. Yeah, he finds a couple of put-downs. Yeah, he finds some good put-downs for this heckler. And the, the, he starts to win over the room. The first gig is a success, a roaring success, eventually. But it did go down quite well. And then in the very next scene, he's back. they're back in their hotel room. And he's smoking pot again. Yeah. So but he, he kind of says, oh, Al, I'm really glad we've done this. Thanks for convincing yeah. me. You know, I really appreciate it. The next day they go, say they go down for breakfast. Oh yeah, they go down for breakfast the next morning. There's a whole scene of them like pretending to be old, like really old. Yeah, like eating like and old people. It is literally like, ah, oh, have you ever seen how old guys eat? Yeah. And they're sort of dribbling stuff like yeah. it's horrible. Biting through lettuce and <laughs> yeah. it's all falling out their mouths and stuff. And they hit the road again because the next gig is in, uh, well, Buddy, Al tells Buddy that it's in somewhere down South America, not south america south of the united states of america yeah but it turns out that he said no i think he tells him san diego that's it so i couldn't think of the place (laughs) he tells him it's in san diego uh, but But they go past san diego turns out it's in mexico they go to tijuana and then as they're waiting to cross the border buddy says to al that the last time he was in tijuana he saw a a woman fuck a burrow (laughs) i I didn't catch that did he (laughs) yeah wow which is a donkey oh okay Ugh. I don't even want to know the logistics of how that works. Um, so Buddy hits the stage in Tijuana and the gig is being translated. Yeah. So Buddy will talk and then this translator will do it, but in a completely monotonous, like, interpreter's voice. Sure. It really made me laugh. I, I love the idea of that happening, but it, Buddy put pay to it pretty much straight away and uh, could kick this guy off stage. And it was like, I'm not having that. And then, Have you ever been to a gig like a comedy gig where there's a signer 
No, but I have been I to have. a music gig. It's, been, it's quite good. Yeah. I went to went to one when we went to see Bianca Del Rio the other month and she actually like brought her in as part of the act. It was very good. Really? Very funny. Adam Hills yeah. always has one, doesn't he? Yeah. Anyway, sorry. And then we've written the gig's a success, but now suddenly they're in prison. Yeah. So this didn't didn't, catch why they ended up in prison. This didn't flow very well at all. So this bit didn't. No, they, they went out on the town basically. Yeah. And I presume something was cut. They they bumped into a couple of Say semen. <laughs> Just so, like a semen. Yeah. No, you did. So there was a couple of sailors well, after you. on shore leave, and um, Al goes up to him and goes, "Ah, Americans. Uh, you know, can where's a good place to go?" And then yeah, you cut suddenly them, they're just in, in the slammer in, the, in, in prison together. But nothing comes of that either, because then in the next scene they're just back on the road. They give they pay a bribe. They pay, do, but again, do it's they? a throwaway line, just it's, saying if you want to get out. The guard basically says, yeah. Just it just seemed a bit of a pointless thing. It's just yeah, it was. We're in Mexico. We don't need to end up in prison. Yeah. It was just that. But And they, they hit. They get back on the road. And I'll... Uh, I've done it again. Buddy has a bit of a funny turn, uh, uh, like a gas station rest stop kind of area. But then nothing comes of that either. No. <laughs> this middle scene is a bit weird in yeah. this film. It's a bit... It uh, did get a bit disjointed yeah. for, for some reason. So all the way through this, Al is trying to... He's telling Buddy, oh, I'm going to get you on the Tonight Show. Yeah. And he's sort of making calls yeah, at various one, points throughout yeah, the Fallon film. Show, isn't he? So you get a couple of them here. Yeah. And they go through, they're now sort of going through Tucson, Arizona. Yeah, you get into a, New Mexico. Another driving slash gig montage, yeah. don't you? He's just doing loads of gigs. And he's, this guy is a good agent. He's booked him in all over the country in like minutes. Yeah, so they're, they're driving along and there's a cop car behind them, yep. st- which starts flashing them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Al panics and he chucks Buddy's weed out the yeah, window. Yeah, Buddy's, Buddy's smoking pot again. But then the um, the cop car just goes past them. <laughs> yeah, it just drives straight past. So because of that, Al needs to get Buddy some more weed. Yeah, and... they're, fall, they're both fall just before that. They both fall asleep in their dinner. Yeah, because they're old <laughs> and they're tired. <laughs> so Buddy did, realizes he needs some more weed, but unfortunately they're in Texas. Yeah, and you can't get weed in Texas, so he wants to go to a different state. He needs, so we need to skip states and get me some weed from somewhere. But but Al says, no, I can get you some weed. It's fine. It's It can't be that difficult. So you get kind of a split scene now of Buddy being on stage performing and Al's out and about trying to score some drugs. Yeah, And it's a bit of a montage of she that, talks, isn't it? And, talks to some youth, which yeah. doesn't go well and ends up in a jazz bar, doesn't he? It does. and Because there was a joke earlier about him getting drugs off jazz musicians yeah. and Buddy's like, how old are you? Yeah. There's no jazz musicians anymore. But he does actually manage to get some drugs from them. And while he's doing that, but he's having a quite bad gig. This one's not going down so well, is it? He's no, getting, not so uh, not so well in getting, front of the cowboys. No, he's getting heckled, and this old lady throws a bottle at him. And apparently, I was reading on IMDb's trivia, which I always love to read. The, this old lady threw this bottle at him as they were filming, and it hit him right in the junk. Oh. <laughs> apparently, they had to stop filming because he was laughing so much that this had happened. It wasn't a stunt bottle. It wasn't. A, <laughs> I think it was, but if it's even a rubber bottle is going to hurt if it hits you in the junk. And apparently, he hit the deck, but he was laughing so hard they had to stop filming. Nice. So I really like that. Yeah, but the bottle actually hits him on the head in the actual film. So, the, and then there's another another scene at night where they they. Um, I was I like so, I was, I was sort of quite... been going on, you know. Yeah. Why did you quit? Why did you quit? It was a wrong thing to do. You could have been yeah. a huge star, and and Buddy just sort of puts it down quite quite quickly and, and brutally. Really, he just says, "It's the right thing for me to do. Yeah. I've got a wonderful family. I I loved my job and my career. Yeah. Why can't you just accept that it this was, wasn't for me? It was a really good scene, actually. I thought he actually says, "I had a really good life. What the fuck did I quit? Yeah. And I thought that was quite nice. I yeah. They, was a really this nice was the line. point where they both got to do some acting. Yeah. Proper proper acting went on there. It was a nice scene. Um, in the very next scene, we meet Andy McDowell for the first time. Yeah, suddenly we were in Kansas. <laughs> yeah, it does. Flit we are about, in Kansas. It does North. flit about quite quickly. There's a there's no like throwaway scenes of just unimportant. It's some of the gig to gig to gig. To yeah, but some of the transitions don't like I said before. It just doesn't up, really yeah. flow very well at times. There are there are, yeah, I'd agree with that. I was sitting in a cafe having a drink, and she's like over the other side, and he he manages to pull her. She's doing a book reading, isn't yeah, she, she's basically? Like a, yeah. And they, they do. They have a bit of a flirt and end up swapping numbers. Yeah. And he asks her out for a dinner and he gets her number. <laughs> and then there's a really nice thing because she's texting him and he's lying on his bed. And he's trying to text her back, but he's a little old man and he can't text. Yeah, old people can't text, <laughs> old people obviously. can't text. It's very true. He's, he's struggling with the old predictive messaging, isn't yeah. he? All the way through, he wouldn't take any pot off Buddy, but as soon as... Doris, her name is. Yeah. Andy McDowell does not look like a Doris. <laughs> no way. I don't know why to me, that name is happened. Doris is a little old lady yeah. with a, a little perm. No offence to any Dorises out there, but 
but Andy McDowell doesn't look like a Doris. If you're a Doris, hit me up. I want to talk to you. <laughs> Definitely. But yeah, she doesn't look like a Doris, but she is a Doris. And she's got some pot as well, and she offers it to Al, and he's straight in there. All these old geezers are just, just doing smoking. Pot. Yeah, they're loving their lives. Yeah. Loving their lives. So they're on a... Basically, Buddy and um, Al are on a day off, aren't they? Yeah. So this is well. Al's met up with Doris on this on this rest day, and yeah. he's sort of ditched Buddy, really. Yeah. And they, they stop her. They are just basically walking around the town being silly, aren't they? Because they're yeah. on pot. And they stop at this busker and listen to him play for a bit. Yeah, and, and they, they sort of go for dinner because they've got the munches and they're, they're high together. And it's, yeah. oh, hilarious. And they eventually end up watching Buddy. Uh, his uh, show, don't they? Yeah. And in the next scene, all three of them go on the road together. She yeah. joins them on the road. She sort of pops up in the back of the car, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah, even though she's like, she's obviously got a job. She's some sort of author or writer. But she just ditches everything. She's true. <laughs> she's very much a free spirit, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's just going. There's another driving montage and for a little while again. And they eventually, they check into a hotel. But this hotel, they've only booked two rooms, obviously. Yeah, we're now in Chicago, by the way. I'm glad that you're keeping track of where we were. It's I fine. I find it quite interesting to sort of cross my mind see where they were tra- trailing along. And uh, So they're in this hotel and I was kind of stood in the corridor. I so like this. Are, this yeah, was I like quite this. funny. There's, the rooms are opposite each other. So Buddy's in one. And Doris is in the other. And they both go in. And they both go in. And he's Al's just kind of left, left in. out in the corridor. Yeah. He doesn't know which room he should go into, which I thought was really nice. And he's literally like panicking on the spot. Yeah. So but, Buddy comes back out yeah. and he's like, well, you go into that one, obviously. <laughs> you don't want to sleep with me. Yeah. And he does. And I think he did He did eventually go into Doris's room, didn't he? But he, Yes, but it was left kind of... Kind of open. As to if he stayed there or... Yeah. Because yeah. he gets a phone call pretty much he straight does, away. Yeah. And... Unfortunately, it's revealed that the Tonight Show is not happening. It's a bust. He has been let down and they don't want Buddy. Buddy, doesn't, Buddy didn't really want this at the start, but Al built it up so much that now Buddy does want it, so now he's got, Al's got a reveal that he's not getting it. Yeah. It's, it's that kind of uh, reveal. So the, Al and Doris take a few more drugs. No, they, they, go, they go mushrooms this time. Yeah, they go, they go a bit, hard, <laughs> bit more hardcore. Because she just happens to have a sort of plastic bag full of them in her uh, handbag. Yeah. And... This time they're at a proper comedy club now with a proper comedy promoter who is played by Richard Kind, who I love. He's good. And I was really disappointed he was only in this for like yeah, two it like, minutes. It was, it was definitely a scene. cameo, wasn't it? But yeah. yeah, it's a shame because he plays like a promoter of a club that's got this like proper comedy club, doesn't yeah. he? Just as there are, I think Buddy goes in. He does. He takes Buddy in. He's, the guy's called Jimbo. Yeah. And he takes Buddy in to like show him around and Al and Doris are still standing outside. And his granddaughter shows up yeah so uh genie i was granddaughter Grand- from the start yeah and she has buddy's son in tow yeah and he we haven't met before we hadn't met before um he is really not happy yeah he's like where, where the hell has my dad been for the last <laughs> yeah. two weeks where's my 80 odd year old dad just ran away because they, they deliberately weren't contacting their family were they no he so uh there was a couple of scenes where like uh, our granddaughter had rung him and he just just blanked it and ignored the, didn't call, take the call and she she's She's not as angry, but she's pretty angry. Yeah, because I think she's she's not angry about him for going because it's not abnormal behaviour for Al. Yeah. But she's angry at him for dragging, dragging Buddy, Buddy along. Yeah. There's a little scene where she meets Doris and they have like a bit of a chat, don't they? Because yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm meeting my granddad's girlfriend. So Charlie, who is Buddy's son, goes into the dressing room to confront his dad. Yeah. Charlie's played by Chris Parnell, who you will know. I recognise his face, but I couldn't tell you he's where from. Been in loads of stuff. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look him up for you. You will. I couldn't place him, and I didn't. I wasn't that. I wasn't. Wasn't um, that bothered to look it up. No. <laughs> There's quite a lot of big name actors in this. He's in Anchorman. Okay. He's in those kind of films with Will Ferrell and. Right. Oh, that's, uh, that John C. Riley and all those. Sort of, from. Yeah, you'll have known him from them sort of things. He has been in something quite recently. What do I, I know him from something? I just don't know what. It's not sticking out. Ah, not, not sticking worry. out. I don't know. He's just he's in. He's one of those guys that's just yeah around. You just know. You if you saw his face, you would know who he is. As you said, you you recognise him. So Buddy and Charlie are having this. It's not really an argument. You can tell that Charlie's disappointed in his dad, but. He also respects his dad's opinion, I guess. They're not, like, shouting at each other. Yeah, so I think he is, he, like I said, he is more worried because this is out. This is not usual behaviour for him to just take off yeah. like this. He's obviously, he, he had a sensible job. He's been a decent father to him. It's, it's, yeah, as far as Charlie's concerned, he's just, he didn't even know that he was a stand-up comic. And and he has, um, but he has a good line in this. He's, he sort of says, you know, 
what do you know about what I did before I was a parent? Yeah. Basically. Uh, yeah. Which he kind of repeats a couple of times. And I think that's a, quite an interesting You concept, don't know what actually. your parents were like before you were born. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's an interesting idea. I thought that. Yeah. And, and it sounds like you were a comedian. What, you, you don't do comedy. You you're a funny guy, but you're not yeah. a comedian. But and and he and didn't know that he used to be a yeah. stand-up comic. And he got to the point where he would have been on Ed Sullivan. Buddy calls himself a closeted comedian. Yeah. Which I thought was quite good. But it's at this point that we get the reveal that Buddy is suffering from pancreatic cancer. He is. And it is a terminal case. He's like beyond help so is at this, in a parallel scene so at the same time this is being revealed in the conversation buddy's having with his son yeah al's granddaughter also is telling is telling him yeah because she's kind of like oh you don't know yeah. this is why we were worried about this, yeah this is why we've been chasing you around the country trying to get buddy back home because he's in a really bad way and, and yeah al was none the wiser obviously he didn't know that no, he had no clue case. and you i thought chevy chase at that point was brilliant his, he played it well actually his face just dropped yeah. and it was like wow that's exactly how you would react to find something like that out and it, this is obviously why he's been smoking all the pot because it's helping him with his pain relief um, and it was it was almost emotional because there's a good line from, i think it was emotional. uh buddy's son charlie he's he sort of says why are you i don't want you coming out telling jokes to these people he's to strangers he says uh, what do you say? He says, "My kids haven't heard all your jokes yet. You should yeah. be spending your time with us." And it was, it, again, it almost, it was quite a good scene, and it almost didn't fit in this film. Not that this was think? a bad film, but it was. Yeah, but it, it had, this was. It would. It just felt like a really abrupt turn. Yeah, for me, like yeah, I'd agree with that. This, this is the best bit and this best scene in the film. It as, is for, a really good scene. As far that's storyline what I'm and acting wise, yeah. this is the best scene in this film. But yeah, I guess you can say that it didn't. It felt it wasn't as lighthearted as the rest of the film. Yeah, yeah. no, which is fine. Yeah. It, but it just it went. I know what you're trying to. It say. It took yeah. a real turn really quickly. Yeah, but the gig goes on. Buddy's like, I'm still going on stage. I'm doing this gig. Sure. And they had a bit. There was a bit of a chat earlier on about out Buddy saying, "I'm one night. I'm just going to come out and sing." Yeah. Because I can. And I was like, "You really can't it's not do part that. Of the act, do not yeah. do that. That That's is not your act." But he does. He comes out on stage at this point and he's he's singing. And Al's face drops again. And he's like, what is he doing? But there's like a full-on band behind him. Al, and Al, t- Al turns to Doris and says, is he singing? And Doris <laughs> says, no, you're hallucinating. Yeah, it's The mushrooms have kicked in. Al is hallucinating from the shrooms that he's taken. And there's, this seems really weird now because it's like... We've got a whole musical number. We've got a whole musical number going on. He's, he's, With Richard Dry for singing. <laughs> Al's in an empty theatre on, on his own. Buddy kind of walks off into the light. Yeah, with Ed Sullivan. With Ed Sullivan. <laughs> Al's dancing around with Doris. It's yeah. like, so it turns like from a, it turns from it, it turns from a singing musical number into a dance number. Yeah. At, at which Al and Doris are the lead dancers, yeah. and they're surrounded by because they're in Chicago, I guess, a load of basically Al Capone style gangsters. Yeah, and they're both singing as well, and it's like it is an absolute. It is all a hallucination, <laughs> and it is felt like a hallucination, but. It was really weird, and it finishes with them having a kiss, old uh, Chevy and Andy. Yeah, it doesn't end well because the next morning Doris is gone. Yeah, so that's it. It cuts <laughs> straight yeah, to the that's, next morning. Yeah, you don't see any more. And that night. she has left a goodbye note, basically. Yeah, she's left him a note on his pillow. I think it essentially says, "Thanks for one of the best nights I've ever had." Yeah, I'm done. See you later. See you later. And she, what's the line in it? She says, cause it, um, "Remember to don't always wear your shoes, so you can feel the ground underneath you." Yeah, that's a nice line. I liked it. Comes up later. It does, yeah. So, yeah, she's gone. She's just, yeah, she's just gone. She just, See you later, Doris. She's just done. Al goes to see Buddy, and Buddy is on an absolute high. He's yeah. Like, he's like, that last night was the best gig of my life. And like, they've, they've literally, he's got a couple of newspapers in front of him, and there's yeah, reviews there's in reviews it saying how good, how good he was and how amazing he was. And this is the point where Al reveals to him that Jimmy Fallon didn't happen, that Tonight Show's not happening. And Buddy's and not really bothered. He, he doesn't give a shit. He says, <laughs> um, don't care, we're having care a less. great time. Yeah. I want to keep going. Yeah. Uh, uh, but Al says, no, it's, it's done. It's, so this has now twisted the relationship twisted, round from yeah. the start. And, and obviously Al's, Al knows now yeah. the, the history of this. So he says, no, it's done. It's time for you to retire. And they they and have this, a bit of a row, don't they? They do have a row and they drop a lot of F-bombs. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, they really do. Which again, hadn't really happened through this film. And we're suddenly dropping F-bombs for five minutes. There's really there's a few really weird out of place scenes. Now you think about it in this film, like that dance number was out of place, and yeah. this is out of place. But it kind of works. Yeah, I'm not saying it doesn't work, it, but it it is. It's it like did feel out of place, but it because it's been a quite a genteel film, slow. 
you know, down to even the soundtrack is very plinky plonky. Yeah. And then you've got the random sex talk scene. Yeah. You've got this scene here where we're dropping F bombs all over the place. The mushroom hallucinations. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah, I know what you're saying. They're all out of place, but I don't think it really felt I'm not saying it weird. didn't work. Yeah. But it's 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 oddly structured. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It is oddly structured. It's it's patchy. Yeah. It's at this point that Al reveals that he knows that Buddy's sick. Because I think Buddy was keeping it from him, wasn't he? And Al reveals it to him. But Buddy says, I can't quit now. That would be my only regret in my life if I do. Yeah. Al sort of says, ah, that's why you smoke all that pot. Yeah. But they decide to carry on, yeah. ultimately, at the end of this argument. Yeah, so they get back in the car. And we've now got a car full. So yeah. we've ditched Doris. She's gone. But we've that's gained... maybe why that she's written out of it. Because <laughs> yeah. in this car. But they've gained um, Jean- Jeannie, Jeannie and Charlie. And Charlie. So they decide, look, if you're going to do this, we're coming with you. And we're going to the last stop of the tour. Yeah, we're heading to New York. We certainly are. And Al kind of, he visits the Ed Sullivan Theatre, doesn't he? Which is where The Tonight Show is still filmed. Yeah. He go, he goes to another comic. Yeah, a guy he, called Max. Yeah, I didn't catch. So he's one of Al's ex-clients. Yeah. And he is also an old dude. Yeah. But he has somehow, <laughs> a, it's not really gone into, no. I don't suppose it really matters. He has now got us. This guy Max has got a slot on the late show later on. Yeah, that night, in fact, conveniently. Yeah. And Al tries to convince him to give it up. Yeah, which was a bit harsh on him. I thought it but. was because Max, quite rightly, he's kind of like the film tries to paint this Max as a bit of a bad guy, but yeah. he stands up and has this argument with Al and says, "Actually, I need this for I've my worked kids. Really hard for this for my I've family. Got, yeah, it's my career. Why are you asking me to not do it? Yeah, I was like, well, yeah, fair play. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> yeah." Al kind of puts on the waterworks a little bit, doesn't he? Because he says, look... He basically just says, I will give you how much do you want. Yeah, it does. It offers him as much as he wants. Yeah. And he, he uses the line, I used to work to live, but now I don't work, so I need to live. Yeah. Which I thought that was a quite quite nice little line. And he basically just says to him, look, how much will this cost me to get this slot off you? And we cut straight into The Tonight Show from there. Yeah. It's like, we get, we're get we at the TV show now. Yeah. We don't know what's going to happen. He kind of walk through with Buddy from his dressing room to yeah. sort of the backstage area. Yeah. And you can hear Ryan Reynolds in the background. He can. <laughs> because you can hear the the talk show that's going on as they're getting ready. Yeah. And it's not Fallon, it's um Stephen Colbert. Yeah. And Ryan Reynolds is who he's interviewing. Yeah. But you never see him. No, you don't. I um, presume it's library footage or I sound. I would imagine so, yeah. I don't imagine he came in to record a voice cameo. And Buddy's getting a blood pressure check backstage just yeah. to see if he's all fit and healthy. And I'll... It is revealed at this point has no shoes on. No, he's walking around. He's with walking no shoes around on. barefoot. And Buddy says to him, "Why have you got no shoes on?" And he doesn't answer him. He no. just kind of stands there. And Buddy goes. Out. He gets introduced by this Max guy. Yeah. So Max, so Max is out. Is out there on the show on the stage, and he basically says, "Look, I'm going to tell you a story." Yeah. And he recounts the, sto- Buddy's the story. story of the film. Yeah. This is a guy who was a stand-up comic. Yeah. Got to this show at point where he could have been on Ed Sullivan. Gave it all up. Fifty years later, now he's here. Um, welcome him to the show is basically what he says and buddy goes out onto the stage all the people at the retirement home we go back there now so is it we get a a stand-up montage yeah so as buddy's doing his set yeah you're cutting between the audience in the studio just the guys back at the retirement home with a tear in their eye yeah um and then al backstage watching yeah and buddy you can tell that buddy is absolutely loving everything about this it's you can see it in his eyes he's got this sparkle in his eye where it this is his like lifetime goal. And he finishes his set and the very last line of the film is the same as the last line of his set. And he looks up and he says, Ed Sullivan, if you're watching, I'm sorry I'm late. I'll see you soon. Yeah. I was like, that's amazing. That's a great final line for a yeah, film. Yeah, a good line. And the film ends. And then... They like give him a standing ovation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then there is an after credit scene. Oh, there is a post credit scene. <laughs> There's a post credit scene. Every film's got a post credit scene. It seems to just lately. <laughs> Everyone we're watching seems to have. I thought that line was a great way to end this film. Yeah. This, this post credit scene's unnecessary. Totally. <laughs> I feel like it's in Chevy Chase's contract that he has to be. Yeah, in it's the almost last like of a film. Yeah, I have to have the last bit of the film. That's exactly what it was, I think, because Doris is sculpting him. Well, because Johnny Sunshine's back first. Yeah. So he wheels into a room in the retirement home. Yeah. And he basically says, "Have you heard the news about Al?" Yeah. He's left. He's he's gone to a a horrible retirement place in the Midwest. Yeah. And Doris is there. So the the back in Kansas. The back in Kansas. Her, her well, house. Kansas. Kansas. And yeah, they're living together by this by the appearances. 
And Dolores is doing a sculpture. Yep. And the camera kind of pans around and Chevy Chase is standing there with no clothes on. He is life modelling for he Dolores. He's life modelling for her sculpture. And mm. that is the end of the film. Yeah. And it was such a sh- it was an, it wasn't a shame. It didn't ruin anything, but it wasn't necessary. It was tacked on. It was Very tacked, tacked on. on. That that final line by Buddy would have been a great way to end that film. Yeah. And it is the end of the film, to be fair. What did you think of this? It was fine. It was I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I put off watching this quite a bit. Right. Because I didn't I just I I wasn't quite in the mood for it and I just thought, oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm going to be, it's going to be up my street. Yeah. Um, but it was fine. Yeah. I thought Richard Dreyfus is always good. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a brilliant he's a solid actor. Hand, isn't he? Chevy Chase is as well, to be fair. Chase, Chevy Chase is fine. Um, you know, there was a couple of, it got a couple of giggles out of me. Yeah. Like I say, I did find it patchy. It had some really good lines in it. Yeah. It It's, it's a far kind of it's, middling thing for me, you know. It's something we don't see very often is that everybody in this is a really good actor. Yeah. It's like a well-known actor. And it, it really does make a difference that... Because you can relate to these characters more. I think that's a good point. Because the material is not always great. No. In terms of the script. But if you've got a really good actor, it doesn't need to be. Not necessarily. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it obviously helps yeah. a lot. But if this was a film starring three unknown elderly actors, it wouldn't work as well, I don't think. I think Rich Dreyfus was the absolute star of it. Oh, he carried it. Carried completely. it completely. Chevy Chase is brilliant. And Andy McDowell was really good in what she did. And I think the, any success that the film has, which is not a lot, but it's got to be credit to those three rather than the writing or the directing. They carry it. The yeah, it is down it. to the the, 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 acting. the star and factor in this. It's not something that on this podcast is not something we see very often. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. If we get a good film, it's because it's been well written or well directed. We don't see good actors pulling off good performances very often. Yeah. And it sounds weird to say... But yeah, it was. It was definitely the charisma and the the like I say the star power the, of, the, of the leads, which the chemistry this between above the chemistry rubbish. between Richard Dreyfuss and Chevy Chase was bang. good. It was spot on. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. I, everybody knows my relationship with comedy films, but it's it's, it's very genteel, isn't it? It is. It's just an easygoing. And, you could just stick this on on a Saturday night while you're doing something else yeah. and just have it on in the background. And then you'd and then you'd suddenly your ears would prick up when they suddenly yeah. start. Have these couple of odd dropped in scenes <laughs> yeah. where they're swearing up Definitely. a storm and like I said, my mum and dad had watched it. It's, it's aimed about... at that sort of audience. It's yeah. aimed at an older, an older audience. I'm making out like my mum and dad are really old and they're <laughs> going to kill me. They're not. It's aimed at that sort of generation. It's not aimed at us. It's not aimed at younger people. It's aimed at people who know who Richard Jaffers and Chevy Chase are. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I I had no issue with it. I wouldn't say it's the best film I've ever seen. No, no. But it's it's fine. It's it's fine. That's, that's a good way of describing it. If, it's, it's difficult for me to get too excited about it, yeah. I'll be honest. If you just want to put something on in the background while you're doing the ironing or something. But like I say, stick it on. Dreyfus is just, he's just really watchable. He steals, he's he's he steals a brilliant actor. He's, a, he's, he is. he's excellent. He steals this one completely. Yeah. Have you got a trivia question? Yeah, I sure have. I had two and you've already ruined one of them for have me. I? So. <laughs> good. I like I like it when that happens. Which one? What yeah, did I ruin? One of mine was how old is Chevy Chase? Oh, okay, <laughs> that's why I knew how old he was. Do you want me to go first? With the, this is all At this. pointless because you've already won the series. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, you've Yay. already won the series. So you go first. So what then. is the score? Nine six. Nine six. Okay. So the most it can be is nine eight. Yeah. So you've won, but I can maybe claw some pride back. So am I going first? Yeah, you go. First. So when they first go to. Th- the retirement home yeah there's uh quite a lingering shot i think it's just before um buddy comes to give them a tour yeah uh and there's it's it's a really lingering shot and i think it's because of the content so there's a board outside like the dining room with like a table of events on it yeah i can see it i can't take what it says (laughs) what was every thursday at 3 p.m oh i can see the board yoga I think yoga was on there. I think that was the top one. That's Is not it bingo. <laughs> Good guess. No. Oh damn it! What was it? Singles night. Oh, singles night in an old people zone <laughs> on Thursday at three p.m. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great joke. I yeah, like that. that's a really good little visual that made joke. Made me chuckle. Yeah, oh, I didn't spot that. <laughs> damn it! I'm, I'm rubbish at this. We're not doing this next season. Okay, we're right. doing something else next season. My question for you this week is. Um, when Richard Kind turned up, he was the owner of a comedy club. Yeah. What was the name of the comedy club? I have no idea. <laughs> Chuckles. Oh, you're close. You got the right first letter. <laughs> Chuckles Central. No, it's called Clangers. Oh. Oh, 
Well, that's all right. At least you're not going to get any further ahead. <laughs> oh, I really wanted to get to... Oh, no, I still could get still to get double, double figures. figures. You can still get into there you go. next week's. At least a bit of uh, drama on the last one. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the stream table? Yeah, sure. Where are we looking? Um, Good question. I, it's it's got to be middle, middle it's of mid, the... It's mid-table, isn't it? I, I think I... All right, I went first last time, so you, you, you take first shot. Um, I've gotten down to he's out there on 17. It is better than that. Yep. The Super's in at 16, which was last week's episode. I think it's better than that. Can Just while you've got that up, can, yeah. we didn't reference this last week. Can so, we just take a second to talk about the tagline of the Super? Oh, yeah, we do need to talk about that. Um, obviously, I make these little Instagram posts for the podcast, and I have to get download the poster every week. So I text Nick whilst I was making last week's. And I was like, have you seen the tagline for the Super? This was after we'd recorded it. It was, yeah. Have you seen the tagline for the Super? And he said no. And I texted it back to him. And what was your reaction? I, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so the tagline, the, the, tag, the poster of the Super, check it out. It's on our, it's on the bottom. So the it's, screen, it's someone looking out of the peephole. Yeah, no, yeah. But somebody it, looking through you, a peephole you at are Val look, Yeah, you are looking at Val Kilmer. He's out in the corridor. Yeah, it'll be uh, on our Instagram. So check it out. Um, and it says Val Kilmer, the Super. He has your keys. <laughs> Now, who does? That's really helpful. Do you know the only person who had keys in that film was Brad at the beginning? Yeah. He's, yeah. Is it, is, does Brad have the keys? Val what? Kilmer did have some keys. What? I don't it know. Really, is that supposed to be When I was making that, I was like, what the fuck helpful? does that even mean? He has your keys. That's the worst. Well, thanks. I was looking for him. <laughs> what? That's the worst tagline I've ever heard for any film. He has your keys. It's a better film than The Super. The Last Laugh is the better film than The Super. Which brings us to The Resort. What do you think on the resort? I think we're in the right sort of area. I think we're in the ballpark now. Aren't so we? you've got the resort, then Christmas break in, then Emo the Musical. All right. So I, I personally, I t- said I'd give you a fair shot and I'm taking over. That's fine. <laughs> we're discussing. We're not. It For me, it is under Emo the Musical. Really? Yeah. So I think Emo the Musical is better. I agreed. So, so I enjoyed that more. So, but then I'm bringing it in with anywhere in between Christmas, Christmas break, break in and resort. resort and the last laugh. That's weird that I feel like I enjoyed the resort more than the Christmas break in, but it's below it. So I, I think they're all pretty middling for yeah, me. The, yeah, these those three, three. Are, aren't they? I would happily have it between so, the two, between Christmas break in and the you resort. You put it wherever you want it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then we've nearly finished. <laughs> then maybe. And then do the stream table. <laughs> um, let's put it. Well, I'm. I want to put it between Christmas break and the resort. Okay, done. You're happy with that? Yes. So it's better than the resort, not quite as good as Christmas Break In. Cool. Yeah. Sure. Go with that. Done. That's the 24th film into the stream table. Hello. Shall we uh, talk about the 25th? Let's do it. So we've got a bit of a confession to make here, haven't we? That we are recording two episodes at once tonight. Well, yeah. not at once. <laughs> That'd be weird. <laughs> two episodes after each other tonight. Because yes. we want, we're want because we doing the Botskas in a few weeks. And two weeks. Two weeks. And we need a bit more time to work on that because we're going to try to make that something completely different next week we'll be revealing the categories we will for the 10 awards we have 10 awards we have 10 awards to give out and we're going to reveal the categories to you next week so after last week's show we hit the randomizer again and got another film yeah so, so we, the, cho- we the chose film, this one and, and the next final one. episode of the season this, the season finale has been randomized that is a fact however <laughs> in the interim of those that week the film that came out shall we tell them what the film that came out was yeah the film that came out was a film called hardcore henry which we decided yeah that we'll use that as our season finale it came out the randomizer job done nick went away and watched hardcore henry last friday and then on sunday netflix removed it bastards (laughs) so who hadn't watched it ad i hadn't watched it i had watched the last laugh by that point but i hadn't watched hardcore i was so happy i was so happy that i I hadn't watched it i can imagine you were furious i texted you didn't i and i said Hardcore Henry's been removed from Netflix. And you just text me back, I wasted my Friday night. I did. <laughs> it's like, gutted. Do you know what? I had the house to myself. Well, the, ki- the kids have gone to bed and the missus was out. I was like, oh, I'm going to get ahead of myself. I'll watch this film. Oh, I could have done anything. You could have. I could have. That's I'd what you get for watching them out of order. You should watch that. I had a PlayStation there. night, watch something I actually wanted to watch. <laughs> no. Um, so we a might, film that we're never going to talk about. We might do some sort of bonus episode on it at some point. We might do a Patreon where Patreon. I will just tell you about this just film. Talk to me about the film for half an hour. And um, you can try and... What I'm going to do, I think, is I will just talk to you about it. 
I might I could might just turn it into an episode long game. Some of it won't be true <laughs> and you have to oh, decide. True or false, what you have to in, decide. Is it mental? I it, it was it, a bit mental, yeah. So the whole thing is done in first person. Right, like a computer game. Yep. Yeah. I've I remember seeing the because we watched the trailer, obviously, but mental. That's so scary that that happened. Also we didn't mention German that, no Russian film. Russian film is it really? Yeah, I think it was Russian. We didn't mention that Hotbot got removed on that same day. So last Sunday, Netflix removed eighty three items from their library. And Hardcore Henry was one of them. It still makes me laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can see your eyes are really angry at me. Uh, but Hot Butt also got removed, which we reviewed in season one. We did, yeah. And uh, it's a Awful. shame. It's a terrible film, but it's one of my favourite episodes we've done. It's just, it just sticks in my head more than any of the others. I'm, I'm waffling. So, obviously, at, at that point, we had to hit the randomizer again. We did. And so we did. And the randomizer picked a film that is very season finale worthy. It's a film called 211. Or 211. I think 211 would 211, be because it's a cop how it should be pronounced. Now, do you want to reveal who's in 211? Sure. Go. Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage is in 211. We've reviewed... We've, I don't like the word review. We've talked about a Nicolas Cage film before. We have. In the last season. Between Worlds. Between Worlds, which came second bottom. It was garbage. <laughs> it was really bad. It was completely incomprehensible. It was. It was an awful <laughs> film. I think it came second bottom of the stream table last season. But, again, it's a memorable episode yeah, for me. I really enjoyed I that I think episode. it might be the first episode we did a game in, actually. Was it really? Yeah. Wow. The game was how many films has Nicolas Cage been in this year? Is it more films than last year? <laughs> I think you're probably right. I think that was our first game. So, yeah, so for the season two, season finale, we're going to talk about a Nicolas Cage film. Do you want to know the synopsis? Yes, please. It's- We'll read it out for you guys. We've already watched it. We're not gonna. We're not gonna insult your intelligence because in about an hour we're gonna record the episode on it. It says while on a routine patrol, an aging cop, his partner, and their ride along get caught in a standoff with a band of former mercenaries robbing a bank. A Nicolas Cage film synopsis there for you. There's loads of shit going on. Also has Nicolas Cage's son. In it. I was gonna say if um, you uh, that was gonna be my uh, my last tease for it <laughs> is that not only is Nicolas Cage isn't it? Yeah. Nicolas Cage's son is in this movie. Western Cage Coppola. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go out next week, uh, well this week, and watch 211. And uh, we're going to go and talk about it now, but we'll reveal the episode next next week. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.